it's your first tour in South Africa? No, well, I've been here three times okay. uh, in Cape Town. Oh, nice. But this is now my first time here in Pretoria. Oh, and nice. I enjoy this tour very, very much because I'm traveling. I have to cross between Cape Town, then Stellenbosch, yes. as well as in Pretoria and Durban. So I really enjoy touring in South Africa. That's great. Any highlights in terms of the um, as a tourist, you know? Well, I really love to explore new things. So, yes. for example, the Cape Mountain is something fascinating for me, as well as the Cape Point, yes. for example. And you really do have beautiful places, like in each city and yes. just yes. So beautiful. But then South Africa, there's so much to do. Yeah, yeah. And the wildlife, animals, and everything is, is like, wow. That's wonderful. I really love it. To focus on the early years of you playing the piano, the first four or five years, you've obviously built a really good, strong foundation in this time, which is a big part of becoming such an accomplished pianist as you are. So how old were you when you started playing the piano? Well, I was four when I started to play piano, and I was taken to a music teacher, right. and I was getting private lessons, and it's actually like a wish of my grandmother that I, I so she can piano yes, well. she she's a, I mean she was a music teacher and uh, she always was pushing me to, to practice and to see how beautiful music is and all. And when I was seven I already decided that yeah, it is really beautiful, so I really want to do this thing. So then somehow our wishes merged and we I don't know, I was I was so fascinated by the possibilities piano gives me. That I very I think it's very early at seven. I already decided at this that age, were you already envisioning a, maybe a career of being a concert pianist? Yes, absolutely. Because when I was seven, I have won a, a national piano competition in Tbilisi, and uh, that somehow motivated very much. And yes. I thought, wow, so I'm working at home. I'm, you know, it's like it's like a job. So I was I, I never played in the garden or I never. I, you know, I didn't do the things that normally people do in earlier ages, so it was like my job, and then I but got something for it. Yes, I loved it, of course, and then I got something for it, so I won the competition, I was first prize, so I was like, wow, it's really working, so it's not just for me, but people also like it. So then I said, yeah, this is something I want to do in the future. That actually brings me to another question I had. How many hours would you spend practicing every day, let's say, from age of four to seven? Yeah, I think uh, maybe one hour a day or two because I never was a, a you know, happy, happily practicing child because I, I don't know, I had to, I had to be pushed by my mother that she had to remind me to practice even though I enjoyed it very much yeah. but I really needed it for, I, I think, earlier ages, so six, seven, but then I was doing it by myself. So what was it about classical music that inspired you in those early years? You know, when I was four, I was taken actually to the pop group. So that was a, I was singing also, and I was playing on the piano as well. But then somehow I was listening all the time to classical music because to start with, Georgia is a very musical country. So everybody has instruments, everybody can sing, for example. Right. And in our family, I always, I was always hearing music, I was hearing piano all the time. So that somehow inspired me and, you know, I never touched the piano just to, you know, uh, some, some children do the like yes. beating piano or, or whatever, just to make some noise. Yeah. I never did that, they tell me, but I was just listening, was interested. And then I started with my private teacher, then I went to, of course, musical school. And then somehow it went all so smoothly and natural that I don't even imagine what could have been other what could I have done more? I mean, something else. I, I don't, I cannot do it. That's wonderful. Did either of your parents play the piano? No, 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 none of them. And actually, my mother hated to play piano because <laughs> she was taken with force to the lessons oh. and she hated it. And she said, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put my children to any kind of music schools. And she did. From the very early ages, I had least as a favorite composer. Yeah. So first I played, I think first piece of me was La Campanella, the, pa the Paganini effect. That and is my favorite. Oh, really? yes. And I was just fascinated, and not only by the technique and the virtuoso part, but I saw that it's quite a sad piece, actually. And La Campanella. Yes. 
because you know it's it's been played very I don't know to show off the technique and how fast you can jump and kind of things but actually it's such a sad piece and I, I really saw this that so the happiness and sadness is somehow combined in this piece and I said wow I never experienced this feeling before so this is something new and this is something that I like mm. and then I was given uh, advice to, to play some more from this some more and more and more and then mm. I built up quite a quite a repertoire from, from Franz Liszt and then it became my absolute favorite. Very important question, can you share with us any practice methods that you found really effective in, in growing as a pianist in those early well, days? Well, of course, there, there are lots of things that one should really focus on mm -hmm. and I think that the main thing is to follow the text because I really think, I really believe that everything is written on the paper. Mm -hmm. So if you are reading a book and you have those words that describe things, then in musical literature you have those little notes, you know, on a, on a white paper, what tells you everything. And then you have to have the ability to follow it, eh? not to put your own ego in front, and not mm. to play just how you like to play, how you feel like to play, but follow what composer wants, because I think he or she knew it much better than one, oneself. So I think that this is the number one step that you really have to follow the scores. Right. And another thing is the sound, of course, because the sound is very important in expressing things. So you cannot just hit the piano, you cannot just break strings and feel cool about it, you know? I mean, you have to be careful because this is your friend, it's not your enemy, okay? And this is something that you have to take care of, you have to produce, we have so, like millions of possibilities of producing sound and different, you know, it's, it's amazing what piano can. I, can, I really believe that orchestra, the whole orchestra, the, the colors there, you really can find it in the piano. So I think that, you know, from the earlier ages, one should just sit down and just play one note, for example, just play one note and listen until it's it's finished, you know, until it disappears. Because when you push it, you hear those overtones mm. that are flying, that vibration is going, going, and even this one note is so beautiful to listen to, mm. you know? So like this, you start to love the sound. And I think sound is the most important in performing. And the problem always is that people want to play fast, you know, they oh, want to practice yes. fast. And yes. If you have a really fast piece, you have to practice slowly for hours because so it has to stay in fingers, it has to be in your mind and you really and the other way around also, if you have a slow piece and if you're practicing at home like really slow, you will fall asleep and then public will fall asleep as well. So you really have to find the the idea for it. So you have to start and if you have a very slow thing for example, you should play it very fast mm. so that you can have the view from the first note till the last note. Mm. So you have it, and then you make it, of course, slower, and then you are getting there. Slowly, but you are getting there. And it is a long process to learn a new piece. Yeah. Normally, it takes one year or even more to learn a new are piece. Are you talking about the pieces that you've done? Yes. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, like in a normal difficulty pieces take, of course, one year. But I mean, if you are a concert pianist, then you sometimes have to study things in two months, in one month even, yeah. so that's quite stressful, so you must be really having some experience how to study and learn things, but yeah, for I, I would say for children it's one year, for one year and it's for a piece, yeah, of course depending on the difficulty of the piece. So are you talking about like maybe grade four, five, six at that level or grade eight? Yeah, I would say five, six, seven. Because if you have a, if you start some Haydn sonata, for example, with three movements, you really need time for mm. this. Because it's not just you read and play, but you have to develop and you have to see things. There's through so this much world. of depth to the piece to actually yes, of course. bring on, to do justice. And I'm not saying that you should just stick on one piece and don't take another. Mm. I mean, play whatever you like, but have something that you're permanently practicing on. Mm. Because, okay, of course, after a while it gets boring and you're like, oh, not again, and not this piece again. But you have to, okay, make a, make a break, don't play it for one month. And then when you play it, you, you will see that, wow, it's better actually, but I didn't practice, how is it possible? But music is like this, sometimes you are practicing and nothing gets better, and then you are so frustrated, you are like, I don't want to play anymore. 
And then you go to the piano, you play, and you say, how is this possible? So I've experienced that. It's a theater. It's so strange to hear you say it. <laughs> I want to um, just briefly touch on a topic that's something that both beginners and advanced pianists find challenging, um, performance anxiety. So I think that this anxiety is something that is really problematic. So I think one should be very, one should know how to deal with this thing. And I think the advice can be in this, that you have to, you know, look in the mirror maybe and tell yourself that I want to do this. I want to play this piece. Mm. I want to go on stage and do it. Mm. And of course I'm nervous and of course it's, 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 it's scary. Yeah. Of course it's scary because you are going on the stage, there are people listening to you and you are doing something. So it's, it's very difficult to do. Yeah. But I think that one has to just talk to oneself otherwise, or, or consult the psychologist, I don't know. But I do it, I did it some time ago like this, that I was talking to myself yes. in the mirror and then it just helps me. I think the piano street interview mentioned that you just very focused on your goal. Yes, true. Um, I'm very focused, yeah. Okay. But I think one needs a little bit of ne nervosity. I mean, one has to be nervous to, to get that. Yeah, but you have to turn it into the positive. You've obviously had some really great teachers along the way. Which aspects of your teaching do you say were the most influential in helping to get to where you are today? Well, I think it's quite a special case with me because I had the teacher when I was six mm -hmm. and I still have her. Wow. So this is my teacher from Georgia. She's, she's, she's incredible. So, you know, once you find the right teacher, just, just stick with her. And I have a teacher in Weimar also because I'm studying in Liszt uh, University there. And I have Professor um, Grusman there and he's also very good. So I have like two teachers, one in, in Georgia, Natalia Natsushui, and another one in, in Weimar. And they both help in different ways. Right. So I think that every teacher has its own qualities and just everyone should listen to teacher, of course, because they know it better, okay? And they, then you have to course perform but first just listen to people who know more than you. Mm -hmm. It's been really wonderful doing this. Thank you very much. I've learned a lot. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna also mm -hmm. learn a lot. Thank you. And I wish you every success and look forward to following your career hearing more great music. Thank you very much.